Hey, what's up guys? Anton here from Dropship Lifestyle and I just wrapped up a webinar called 187 Niches. It was all about product selection, like how to find great products to dropship online. And I don't know if you know this, but I've done like a webinar very similar to this at least 30 times over this past year. And uh, by the way, if you've never seen it, check the, the description, I guess, of this video and I'll put a link to the replay or to the next time I'm doing one live. But uh, that's not the point. The point is the reason I do this webinar so often is because I have a few things that I always like to kind of teach people to give them like a foundation for product selection. But more importantly, I like to give really the audience an opportunity to ask me questions in real time. So literally, whatever you wanna know about drop shipping, I let people type it in and I get to respond. Okay, you know, Steve, here's the answer to that. Okay, Andrea, here's how you do this. And it's really cool because it's just interactive, right? And I think the best way to learn is when you have that interaction. So uh, with that being said, after, again, you know, 30 plus live webinars in the past year, I've noticed a trend of the same questions coming up like over and over and over again which is fine because I get it right we all start somewhere we all have the same basic questions but what I thought would be kind of cool to do for this week is to take the top three that I see literally you know almost every webinar I do and to answer them all in this webinar so maybe if you've never been on one or you haven't been on one yet you can get the answers as well and you'll be more prepared for when you eventually do hop on one of these webinars so with that being said guys this week's episode of dropship weekly is going to be all about these three questions and let's go ahead and get it started. All right, so question number one is why should I build my website when I don't have any products to sell? Now, let me backtrack a second. As I'm going through like my system for building dropshipping stores, the system I've used for a decade and the system that I've shared with others for the past five years, basically step three is building your website and step four is getting approved with suppliers. So whenever I'm like going through this, people are always like, why would I invest my time and energy into actually building a website when I don't have any type of product to list there? And it's very, very simple. Here's the, the best way I can describe it, giving you like an example I think more people outside of e-commerce would understand. Let's say you wanted to sell Prada bags, right? Not on your website, let's say you wanted to open a store, whatever, in your hometown, and you wanted to sell Prada bags. And you found Prada's phone number on Google, and you called them up and you said, hi Prada, this is Anton, and I wanna sell your bags. And they would say, okay Anton, where are you calling from? And I would say, well, uh, nowhere yet, but I'm thinking of opening the store, it's gonna be awesome, you know, can I sell your bags? They're gonna say, no Anton, have a nice day, and they're gonna hang up on me. And that's where the conversation ends, right? Very simple. Now. Different conversation, let's say I call Prada and I say, hey Prada, this is Anton, I wanna sell your bags. Obviously I say it differently, but I say I wanna sell your bags. And they say, okay Anton, where are you calling from? And I say, well, I actually just leased this space on Fifth Avenue, this is the address, would you like me to email you some photos? By the way, I'm also talking to Gucci and Burberry and whoever sells these high-end bags, right? Whoever their competitors are, and they're all showing a lot of interest too, they wanna be in my store as well and we would love to carry your product line. That conversation is gonna go a lot differently than the first one. They're gonna say, okay, Anton, we're gonna put you in touch with whoever our you know, New York sales rep is, right? Whoever that person is, and the conversation is gonna move forward. Now, with e-commerce, with drop shipping, we don't have physical stores, but we need to show the suppliers, the people that we wanna work with, that we're serious, that we actually have something, that we're not just some guy or girl calling and saying, hey, can I sell your stuff? Because the good ones will never approve you, and the ones that will approve you are gonna be what I call bronze suppliers, which are you might as well not even list their products. In fact, you shouldn't list their products because they're probably only gonna lose you money. So again, if you want any respectable supplier to approve you, to do business with you, you build your website first, and that is why. So uh, that's usually the example I'm, at least for the past couple webinars, I gave that example. Um, hopefully it makes sense. If it does, please give the video a like or let me know in the comments um, because I think I'm gonna run with that. I think it, it can resonate with everyone. Um, and if you see me looking down, it's because I wrote down these, these questions here. But guys, question number two that I get all the time, basically every single webinar, um, as I'm going through the whole thing, like talking about how dropshipping is such an amazing business model because honestly, it doesn't cost a lot of money. There's not a lot of startup costs. I do like refer to one startup cost, which is Shopify. We use them to host our e-commerce stores. They're by far the best e-commerce platform. And uh, typically it's like $30, $30 a month, $29 a month. Our students get a 10% discount because we have a relationship with Shopify because we use them so heavily and we send them so much referrals. So I think like, what's that, 26 bucks a month? And then people always ask, okay, beyond that, what startup costs are associated with building my dropship store? And honestly, it's hard for me to answer because 
I want to say like zero dollars, but I obviously can't say zero dollars. Now, Shopify, your e-commerce hosting with our special deal that we have with them, it is for our members only. That's one of the kind of uh, arrangements in the deal. Um, you get uh, 21 days free to get started and then it bills you at you know 10 percent off so 20 24 bucks a month now beyond that what else do you have to spend money on you need a domain name okay your URL ten dollars a year that's the cost the only other significant cost that you're gonna have when you start is traffic okay so our whole business model the whole thing that we do here at dropship lifestyle is based around paid traffic I I'm a huge fan of giving someone money for something and getting more back in return. And with paid traffic, if you know how to do it, if you set it up right, that's the relationship. Tell Google, I'll give you a dollar, they'll send me enough traffic that'll make me three, right? That's like, that's the business model I like. So with paid traffic, that is an expense. You have to pay to get people to your store. With that being said, the next logical question is how much money do you have to pay? Uh, the first thing I'll say is Google will give you a $100 credit to get started. So basically you sign up, with them, you tell them, hey, I'm ready to advertise. They say, okay, cool, here's $100 for you to basically test with and experiment with. Now, if you set up everything right, if you're a member of Dropship Lifestyle, if you have your system in place, you should make your first profitable sale before that $100 is spent. And then, of course, you can reinvest money back in traffic. Now, as far as how big your traffic budget should get, I always tell people, like, I don't wanna scare you, I don't wanna overwhelm you, but honestly, if you could spend, and think about this hypothetically, and if I don't want to scare you by saying this is like three months down the road or six months down the road, but let's say five years from now, right? Way down the line, five years from now, you're in a position where you could pay Google $100,000 every month in advertising, but that 100,000 was gonna make you $500,000 in profit. Would you spend $100,000 a month? And the answer is yes, of course you would. You would give them as much money as you could as long as they were giving you more back. And that's basically how paid traffic works. So while I'm not telling you spend $100,000 a month, that's not what your startup cost is, just think like long term, as long as the money you put in is getting you a good return on your investment in terms of sales early on, you're gonna put more and more into it as long as that equation keeps working in your favor. Um, side note on this, uh, you know, people always wonder like, well, what if I, you know, like how, how deep in the hole, I guess, with advertising, do I have to go before I get money back? Like, do I have to spend, you know, $500 before I make my first sale? And the answer should be no, you shouldn't have to do that. If that's, if that's what's happening, then, you know, talk to me, talk to my team because something's not right. But as far as like turnaround time for, for ROI, for return on investment, it's very, very fast. So here's the deal, guys. Uh, and you know this if you're part of Dropship Lifestyle, but if you're not, if maybe you just found this on YouTube or on Facebook or something, you're not aware of how we do things yet. Our advertisements, when we're spending money on ads, they're extremely targeted and they're being shown to people who are ready to buy. Based on the keywords we buy, based on how we set up our ads, we're targeting people basically with their credit card in hand, trying to decide where they wanna buy from and then it's our job to get them to choose us, right? So here's the deal. Once they find us, once they click our ad, once we give Google that money for that lead, we're gonna know within usually five days max if they're gonna be a customer of ours or not, right? Because if they're not, then they're either gonna buy from someone else or they weren't serious anyway. So the turnaround time to basically get money back on your ad spend, again, you know, think of like a five day window. It's not like you're you're spending money for the next, you know, three months and then hoping a year from now you have a profitable business. It's a very quick process. And again, if it's not working in your favor, if you're not getting an ROI on your money, then talk to me, talk to my team. We'll take a look at your site, we'll see what you're doing wrong and we'll help correct that. So um, I know it doesn't like directly answer the startup cost question, but just know it's very, very low in terms of fixed costs like hosting. And then with traffic, again, start with the $100 credit, make your money back on that, and then spend gradually more and more and more, as long as, again, the equation works in your favor. Uh, third question, guys, that I get all of the time. And by the way, if, if, if number two made sense, if you got value out of that one, please, again, do give this video a like and comment below to let me know. Definitely helps with uh, the visibility of this channel and of this video. And uh, it's a reason why I keep making all these videos, to be quite honest. But uh, number three, guys, question I get all the time is on legalities. And this one I really don't like to address because, you know, I'm a guy that started his first business, I don't know, 11 years ago, has built a lot of businesses throughout then. And I've never, you know, I have a lawyer, I have an accountant, uh, I have someone that does my bookkeeping, but like I'm not at all involved in that side of things. So like when I have legal questions, I don't like just think like, oh, here's what I should do. I actually go and I, you know, seek advice. Like I, I ask my lawyer that I pay to give me that advice because I don't, I don't know. So um, as far as like 
the, the main legal question, I guess, I get all the time is, do I have to start an LLC? Do I have to start a corporation? And again, my advice to you is do what I do and talk to a professional. That's why they're there. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not a, a lawyer. But um, what I would say is when I started personally, I did start as a sole proprietor just because like I didn't know if it was going to work. You know, like my first business, I was like, you know, let me just, I, I was a kid back then. I was, I think, 20, 21 years old, like I'll just do this under my own name and if I make money, then great. And that's what happened. I, I put up a website with you know my personal information, made a few sales, then I reinvested that money uh, into an accountant who set me up with an S corporation, took care of all the legality stuff and eventually added a lawyer to my team and you know built from there. But um, you know, I, I, and that's not advice to you to say start as a sole proprietor, because again, back then I didn't have any assets, I had nothing to lose. So, you know, knock on wood, if everything you know fell apart or something happened, I didn't have any assets to protect. So for me back then, it was fine to be a sole proprietor. But again, once I started to make money, started to have assets, I personally formed an S Corp, but that was at the advice of my accountant based on my unique situation. So my advice on that is again, you know, if you wanted to be a sole proprietor, you can, doesn't mean you should. Definitely talk to someone if, you, uh, if you're not sure what path you wanna take. So uh, with that being said, guys, I hope you got value from those three questions. Again, I've seen them come up repeatedly over the past year as I share my webinar and my message with the world. So hopefully you got value. Again, if you did, give the video a like, leave a comment below. And with that being said, guys, see you next week for Dropship Weekly.